In this 10 minute video I'm going to show you how I tuned my average page load time from 8 seconds down to 2.5 seconds in a few simple steps. Step 1 is to measure the real end user experience. End user experience is measured from the browser side, not from the server side and not by synthetic transaction. For this we're going to use WebTuner. WebTuner collects the actual page load time from the end user's browser as they hit your website. WebTuner lets us view the number of page views, unique visitors and the response time of our website. What we can see if we focus in on the response time is at the start before we make any changes our page load times are taken around about 8 seconds on average. At the end after we make these three changes you can see our page load times now come down to around 2.5 seconds. So having identified that you've got a slow website the next thing is to understand why and for that we use the waterfall. Waterfall charts can be produced by a number of different tools but for this example I'm going to use web page test. The waterfall gives you a breakdown of the page load time and all the objects on the page. The first part of the, the page load is in this case quotes.axpx which is the server side code that needs to be executed in order to generate our HTML document. In this case you can see that server side time is around two and a half seconds before the content comes back. So we could look at tuning that two and a half seconds but what I'm going to do is leave that for now and come back to that one later because actually in this case our page load time is 14 seconds and where most of the time is spent is actually further down the waterfall where you can see here we've got all the JavaScript files, all the CSS files and all the images on the page and this is where most of the time is spent. So to apply some front-end optimizations, we're going to use Optimize. So I've already installed Optimize on the server, fired up the configuration tool, and first of all what I'm going to do is just enable the safe mode and to turn acceleration on. So if we go back to WebTuner now, we can see the impact of that change. Uh, originally the page load times were around about 8 seconds, we made our change here, and now page load times have come down to around 5.5 seconds. We can now take the optimization a step further by going into expert mode, going into the configuration, going into images and turning on HTML image combination to apply CSS sprighting. Next if we go back to WebTuner and validate the impact of the second change, we can see that the page load time came from around 5.5 seconds and dropped down to somewhere around about 4 seconds. So step three was to apply the front-end optimization, and what we saw there by using Optimize to apply front-end optimization techniques was the page load time came down from an average of eight seconds down to 5.5 seconds and then eventually down to four seconds, so half of the original page load time. So having applied front-end optimizations, you can see now that we're scoring A grades here for most of these things and that the waterfall chart is much shorter. We've combined a lot of JavaScript, CSS files and images together, which means that we're now only doing 14 requests instead of 48 previously, and we've also done a lot of compression to make those things smaller. So now, actually looking at this, most of the page load time is actually on the server side. It's this first bar here, executing the ASPX, uh, and waiting for the response back here. So you can see that's why we're still scoring an NF grade for our time to first byte. So at this point we need to address the server time and what's happening on the server. So to look at the server side we're going to use App Dynamics and here we are in the business transaction view. We can see all the different ASPX files uh, which have been executed and here's our quotes uh, ASPX which has the problem. We can see it's missing its service level. We can see its average response time, number of calls, errors, slow requests, very slow or stalled requests. So to drill down from here we can click into the transaction and we can see where most of the time is spent. Straight away we can see 99% of the execution time is in this ADO.NET call to the Stock Trader database. If we go a little bit deeper we can focus on some of the slow calls, sort it by execution time and we can click on one of these calls and we can see an individual request. If we drill down we can see the call stack, we can see where the time spent in the ADO.NET call and we can see the exact SQL statement. So having identified that a SQL call is responsible for our slow page load time we can now look at dbTuner for SQL Server to find out why that statement is running slowly. First of all looking at the overall activity on SQL 
you can see that we're spending about two and a half and three and a half minutes of activity in each one minute time slice. Therefore, the database is quite heavily loaded. If we scroll down, we can see the wait states. We can see a list of SQL statements that were executed. And what we find is right at the top of the list here is the culprit. We can see for this statement the number of executions, its average response time, and its cumulative elapsed time for the period. So if we click on the statement to drill down, we can now see the profile of the statement over time, showing the CPU and elapsed time, and the number of executions. We can also see underneath the number of logical reads and writes, logical reads here being very high. And then if we scroll down further, we can see the SQL text, and we're able to get an explain plan for the statements. So what we can see here in the explain plan is very simple. Um, step three here is a table scan on the quote table and that accounts for 97% of the cost here. If we view the object, what we can see here is the quote table, the columns in the table and the number of rows which in this case is over 5 million. Further if we look down you can see the indexes and in this case we have no indexes on this table. The next step from here is to add an index to the table. We can see here looking in the WHERE clause, it's the symbol column which is used for filtering and that's the column that we need to add our index to. So what I've done here is I've logged onto my SQL Server machine, gone into the Management Studio, um, found the quote table, saw there were no indexes on there so I've just added it, the, uh, the quote symbol index here just on the symbol column just added that as a non-clustered index and what we can now check in a few minutes is to see whether that has had the desired effect. So if we now look back at dbTuner after adding the index we can see here at the point where the index is added a marked change in behaviour where the red line which is the number of executions per minute suddenly increases so we're getting better throughput from the database while at the same time the blue line which is the the time spent inside of SQL Server uh, executing SQL suddenly drops off from a few minutes down to just a few seconds. If we scroll down to the top statement we can see that that follows a similar behaviour where both elapsed time and CPU time suddenly drop down to virtually nothing as does the number of logical reads. So having applied the index to the database now we can go back and validate the improvement. What you can see here is a marked change at this point so before we added the index we can see our average response time is around one and a half seconds and that we were having uh, around 500 calls per minute. After the change now you can see that the average response time has dropped to around five milliseconds and that we're now doing much higher number of calls as well. You can also see most of the calls now are green which means they're within the SLA whereas previously they were red meaning outside of the SLA. If we now go back to web page test to look at the waterfall, what we can see here is this first bar has now been reduced, so our time to first byte is much smaller, and we can see at the top that we're scoring A grades across the board. Finally, we go back to WebTuner to validate our improvement on the overall end user experience. So we now we can see we've got a third change here, which was our database index added, and we can see at this point, page load times went round from around four seconds on average down to around two and a half seconds. So step four was to do the backend optimization, looking at both the application server and the database using App Dynamics and dbTuner. And in this stage, we brought the page load time from four seconds down to two and a half seconds. So in summary, the steps we followed were to understand the real end user experience, to identify that we had a problem, then to understand the waterfall chart to see the breakdown of the page load time and identify whether the problem was front end or back end. Next, we optimized the front end using Optimize, and then finally, we optimized the back end using App Dynamics and dbTuner. If you'd like to find more about any of the four solutions mentioned in this video, head over to www.applicationperformance.com. Thanks for listening.